Today we have a mind-blowing video to share with you how scientists made antimatter and why it is the most expensive and explosive thing ever, coming in at $62.5 trillion per gram. So what is antimatter and why is it so special? Well, to answer that, we need to go back to 1928, when a scientist named Paul Dirac wrote a math formula that explained how electrons move very fast. The formula had a problem, it had two answers, one for electrons with positive energy, and one for electrons with negative energy. But that did not make sense, because energy should always be positive. Dirac thought that maybe the formula meant that there are two kinds of electrons, normal electrons with negative charge, and anti-electrons with positive charge. He called anti-electrons positrons. He also thought that maybe there are two kinds of everything, normal matter and antimatter. Antimatter is like matter, but with opposite charge. But there is a catch, when matter and antimatter touch each other, they disappear in a flash of energy. This is why antimatter is so explosive, it releases all the energy inside it, according to Einstein's famous formula E equals mc squared. To give you an idea of how much energy that is, one gram of antimatter would make a huge explosion, bigger than the atomic bomb. This is also why antimatter is so expensive, it is very hard to make and keep. Antimatter does not exist naturally on Earth, except in very small amounts made by space rays or some atoms. To make antimatter on purpose, scientists need to use big machines called particle accelerators, such as the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in Europe. At CERN, scientists smash tiny things called protons together at very high speeds, making many other tiny things. Among them are antiprotons, which are the antimatter version of protons. These antiprotons are then collected and slowed down by a machine called the antiproton decelerator, which is the only place making antimatter in the world. The antiproton decelerator can make only a very small number of antiprotons per year, much less than one gram. To keep these antiprotons, scientists need to use special devices that use magnets and electricity to trap them in a vacuum. Even then, some antiprotons can escape and explode with matter, causing losses. To make things even more complicated, scientists at CERN are not only interested in antiprotons, but also in anti-hydrogen atoms, which are made of one antiproton and one positron. Anti-hydrogen atoms are the simplest kind of antimatter atoms, and they can be used to study how antimatter works and compare it with normal matter. To make anti-hydrogen atoms, scientists need to put together antiprotons and positrons in very careful ways. This is done by several experiments at CERN, such as Alpha, Atrap, Asakusa, and GBAR. These experiments use different methods and tools to make, catch, and play with anti-hydrogen atoms. For example, Alpha uses lasers and microwaves to cool down anti-hydrogen atoms and measure their colors. A trap uses electric fields to control the motion of anti-hydrogen atoms and measure their charge. Asakusa uses magnetic fields to guide anti-hydrogen atoms into a detector and measure their weight. GBAR uses gravity to drop anti-hydrogen atoms and measure how they fall. These experiments have done amazing things in recent years, such as making thousands of anti-hydrogen atoms per hour, catching them for more than 15 minutes, measuring their colors with high accuracy, and confirming that they have zero charge and the same weight as hydrogen atoms. However, these experiments are still very hard and costly. The making rate of anti-hydrogen atoms is very low, and the catching rate is very small. Only a few anti-hydrogen atoms can be studied at a time, and only a few things can be measured. Moreover, the experiments need a lot of resources, such as electricity, cooling, maintenance, and people. According to some guesses, the cost of making one gram of anti-hydrogen at CERN would be about $62.5 trillion, or more than all the money in the world. Of course, this is not realistic, as it would take billions of years to make that much antimatter with the current technology. So why do scientists bother to make and study antimatter? Because it can help us answer some of the most important questions in physics and space. 
For example, why is there more matter than antimatter in space? According to the Big Bang Theory, space should have made equal amounts of matter and antimatter. But somehow, matter won over antimatter, and we don't know why. By comparing how matter and antimatter work, scientists hope to find some clues to this mystery. Does antimatter fall up or down? According to the general theory of relativity, matter and antimatter should have the same pull from gravity. But this has never been tested for real. By measuring how gravity affects antimatter, scientists hope to test if relativity is right and look for new things beyond it. Does antimatter follow the same rules of physics as matter? According to the standard model of particle physics, matter and antimatter should act in exactly the same way, except for their opposite charges. But this has never been checked for all things. By measuring how antimatter interacts and reacts, scientists hope to check if physics is the same and look for possible differences or surprises. These are just some examples of how antimatter can help us understand how space works and what it is made of. Antimatter is not only the most expensive and explosive thing on Earth, but also one of the most interesting and important ones. That's all for today. Thank you for watching Chronicles of the Curious. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified of our next videos. See you next time.